everybody, this is Christina from Copictopia. Today I'm going to show you how to make a gift card photo wallet that I absolutely love making. I'm going to start out with red cardstock that is 12 by 4 and a half, and I'm going to use my mono adhesive to adhere it to a piece of vanilla cardstock that is 11 and 7 eighths by 4 and 3 eighths. I basically just cut it down an eighth of an inch from the red cardstock. If you don't want to add all these layers to your photo wallet, you can always stencil or emboss the red cardstock to have it a little bit more simpler and not as thick. However, I wanted it to be a little bit thick so that it didn't tear or anything like that since I'm going to be giving it to a friend. Next, I'm going to add a piece of pattern paper that is 11 and 3 quarters by 4 and a quarter. This is just some old Stampin' Up! cardstock that I had been saving, more like hoarding. Let's just be honest. And I'm just going to go ahead and put this right on top of the vanilla layer. I am really excited how this red polka dot is going to look on this photo wallet and the fun thing about this is you can use it for a photo wallet or you can use it to hold gift cards or both. So now I'm just moving everything over so I can use my new scoring tool from Stampin' Up! I absolutely love this thing. I know it's been out for years but I seriously love it. I just got it. So I'm going to score it on the back side and the first score line is going to be at one and three quarters of an inch. That's going to give us our little flap that is on the very front of the wallet. And I'm just, you're going to see me kind of going over it a few times because you really want to make sure that you're getting through all three sheets of that paper. And you can see I'm just checking it to make sure that I got through all three sheets of the cardstock. And now you can tell that I just got this because now I'm trying to figure out where the two inch mark is. So it was quite fun making this video. So now we're I'm scoring it at two inches. And again, just going back and forth, making sure that I get through all three sheets of the cardstock and paper and pattern paper. Our next score line is going to be at five and three eighths. And again, you see I'm just really working on it, making sure. But I can tell you one thing, this paper cutter and scoring tool really works super well if you're just doing one or two sheets of paper. I just was being extra, you know, really diligent about getting that scored. Now I'm scoring it at the eight and three quarters inch line and just checking, make sure it all went through and I'm going to set it aside because I like to score all of my stuff at once. That way I'm not going back and forth and back and forth. So these sheets of paper are five and a quarter by three and I'm going to score all of them on the five and a quarter side at the one inch line. I'm going to go ahead and speed this up so that you don't have to watch me score all of these. So the next pieces of paper that we have to score is going to be the three sheets of Very Vanilla and they are cut at four and three eighths by six and a half. I'm going to go ahead and score them on the six and a half side. The first score line is going to be at two, and then the next score line is going to be at five. These are going to be our pockets for the gift card photo wallet, and I'm just speeding this up so that you don't have to sit there and watch me do all three of those again. So now that all of the scoring is done, I'm going to set this aside and I'm just going to fold one of the Very Vanilla pieces to see where I want my cutout to be for the half circle. You can either use a die or you can use a hole punch, 
or a paper punch, I mean, but we need to get that cut out so that you'll be able to grasp your gift cards or your photos. So I went ahead and die cut that real fast. I did all three of them at once. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and grab my bone folder and I'm gonna burnish every single one of these pieces. And I'm gonna use my mono adhesive to glue just one side down. I usually do the larger side of the flap um, and fold it in on the smaller side just to make sure that I get everything done. I'm speeding this up as well because again I don't think you need to see me do that three times in a row. But now we have all of our pockets. The next thing that we need to fold is going to be the pocket holders or the little covers which are going to hold it into the base of the wallet itself. So I'm just folding it on that one inch score line and just making sure all of those are burnished down. Now you will notice that I didn't put any glue in the bottom of those very vanilla pockets. But I'm going to go ahead and put this in here, but it's going just right up to the score line, not on the score line. And you want that, leave that pocket open. Now, there is a way you can do it to make this a little bit more interactive. If you wanted to, you could glue that bottom part of the pocket right there where my finger is. You could glue that shut and then you could have like a little um, pocket that flips open. But since I didn't glue the bottom, I am just going to use my mono adhesive to glue this to the back side and create more stability for that pocket. And I'm just doing that to all three of my pockets. I'm making sure that the seam line is on the back side so no one can see it. Then I need to go ahead and do the little inserts. Now these inserts, you can use these for to put photos on, you can write notes on them, or you can take a little glue dot and stick it onto the vanilla part. Now the base of this is going to be the three and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. That's the chocolate part. The vanilla part is three and three quarters by two and three quarters. And there's three of each of these. And I am just making sure that I put the vanilla part on top of the chocolate. Now you may wanna make yours just a little bit more of a margin. I like to th keep things a little bit tight so it just shows a little bit of a border. So after gluing all of those together with your mono adhesive, this is a 1 16th inch hole punch and I'm just punching a small hole into the center end of each of these cards. So these cards are, after you punch them, I have three brads that I'm going to use and I have three small pieces of ribbon. The ribbon measures two and a half inches from end to end, which is the points because I already cut um, little points on each end of them, but they're each two and a half inches. I used kind of a... Um, I guess you could call it like a, a weaved type of ribbon and that way the brad would go through it really easy. Brads don't tend to go through um, satin or anything like that really super easy um, unless you punch a hole in that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do my other two cards for the back and I'm just speeding this up so you don't have to sit through all of that as well. I'm sure that's the boring part for everyone. And then these little inserts just go into the pockets. So it makes it really fun because you can do so much with all of these little pockets. You can even put money in them 
if you don't want to put the cards or you can slide the gift card directly in there without the little cards that we just made. So now I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to get my bone folder out again and I'm going to very carefully fold all of these score lines so that they don't um, buckle up or anything like that. I am being really careful even though I sped up the video so you didn't have to watch it all um, but I'm going over it several several times to make sure that it bends and folds nicely. Now I'm going to go ahead and use my mono adhesive to put all of my pockets into the base of the wallet. You will notice that I'm leaving a little bit of room at the edge of the base as I put the pockets in. I wasn't supposed to do that. Go ahead and put yours all the way up to the edge so that your pockets don't hang over. As you can tell, mine are. This is one of the reasons that your measurements are a little bit smaller than mine. So if you cut your pockets down to four and a quarter instead of four and a half, your pockets will fit much better. So after you put all of your pockets in, and I usually put them, you know, the pockets can slide out on separate sides. You will see they're kind of going opposite. Um, that will make it a little bit more interesting and a little bit more fun. And now I have some little of the Swiss Pixies from CC Designs that you've been seeing me color over the last couple of weeks. I have the videos um, of me coloring those. The links are in the very um, bottom of the description down below so that you can watch those as well. I've just got a few snowflakes and I'm gonna go ahead and glue all of these in with my art glitter glue. And I will speed this up for you as well, just so that you don't have to watch all of that. I have found that using the liquid glue helps them to stick better to the glitter paper than just regular mono um, adhesive. And the silver snowflakes are actually from glitter paper. And that supply, if you want to know where to get some good glitter paper from, the paper cut is down below as well. And I'm just checking to see if this closes. And you can tell now that I've noticed that my pockets are a little bit too long. So if yours do end up being a little bit long because you didn't stick it too, you know, you didn't stick it close enough to the edge, you can always just take those out flip it on its backside and take some scissors and cut it down like I have. Some people will take this out so you don't see that they made a mistake, but I wanted you guys to know that yes, I make mistakes too. And I actually like making mistakes because it's a learning experience. So if that happens to you, go ahead and just slide your pockets out and go ahead and cut them off at the end. Nobody will be able to tell unless you do a video like this and show everybody what you did. So now I'm just going to slide those right back in the pockets so that they are nice and pretty. And I will probably put a gift card on one, writing on one. And another one I will probably put a little picture just because it's fun. Now you can put your images inside on the pocket cards as well. You don't have to, but it's just an idea. So the belly band is nine and seven eighths by one and a half. If you've taken my classes before, you will see that I don't normally score my belly bands. I like to go ahead and just wrap my belly band around to see where it's going to fit the best and I leave a little bit of room just because I know I'm going to be adding some things like the gift cards and things like that. 
So I don't want it to be super tight. And I like to just make my own score lines by squeezing it and making it look nice. That way, if I mess them up, the score lines, I don't have to start over with a new piece because those score lines are there forever. So I'm just going to use some of my art glitter glue to make sure that this really stays on. And I'm just going to push this down. That way, if I leave it on the wallet while I'm gluing it together, I know I have, you know, how tight I want it to be or how loose I want it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and do some decorating now. I have the Stitched Mary die, and that is from Lala Land Crafts. I'm gonna put some art glitter glue on the red one, because I cut two. I cut one in, you can see, in the red cardstock, and I cut one in the vanilla cardstock. And I wanted to do this so that I could shadow it and it would stand out a little bit more. So just gluing those together, and yes, you will get very gluey. I also wanted to put a couple of the glitter snowflakes on there, and those snowflakes are actually from La La Land Crafts too. They're just the large snowflakes. And again, all my supplies and everything will be down in the description for you. This die is the Merry Christmas die, and I cut one out in vanilla, and then the one I'm putting glue on right now is cut out in the same glitter paper that I used for the snowflakes. And to make it stand out on the double or on the stitched Mary, I am just gluing that onto the very vanilla die cut and just using it as a bit of a shadow. That one you're going to get definitely a lot of glue on your hands. So now I'm just going to glue the Merry or the Christmas to the Merry. And I like to kind of offset this when I'm doing it. Um, so I only glue, most of the time, I only glue the top half of the Christmas onto the Merry. So I don't put a lot of glue on the bottom half of it. So now that that is done, I went ahead and flipped the belly band to where the crease was actually on the top instead of the bottom. And now I'm going to glue the glitter snowflakes. And this snowflake is actually going to cover that um, little seal mark um, for the belly band. And now I'm just seeing, I kept putting it the Mary up there because I wanted, I don't want to glue the M or the Y down because that will hit the actual wallet. And then I remembered I needed to put the other snowflake down first. So we're going to get that down. And this will actually, even though the glue is dried just slightly, this will actually make an even better bond for that Mary to stay on the belly band. And I'm just pushing it all down, make sure it goes. So this little Christmas Rose Digi Stamp from CC Designs, I wanted to put that on the front, but you can tell by the dies, it's just not gonna work, it's gonna be too much. So I'm gonna open this up because I still want to use her, I don't wanna leave her out, and I'm just gonna put her with the little reindeer girl at the bottom. I think that would look really cute. I'm actually gonna put her on with some 3D foam. That way she'll stand out a little bit and it's not just all glued down flat. You guys know how I like my layers and I like things to stand out and look a little bit 3D. So I'm gonna stick her on there and make sure that it still closes okay, that it's not too incredibly thick. And stick my belly band on, and I think it's fun to see the little ribbons sticking out the side. And there we go. It is all finished. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. 
and I'll see you guys next time.